hello, hello. I look like I have like a like pink and orange ginormous wings or something weird. Oh, look at that. I got a little sneak peek. Okay, so you know this chair is in progress. These chairs take quite a bit of time, but we are gonna use paint on fabric tonight. I'm really, really excited about it. I have a lot of experience with painting fabric under my belt. Um, my way is not the right way. It's just what I have found works best for me, and I'm changing as I go. I'm evolving over time. The fun part's actually gonna be on the front. This is the back of the chairs. Uh, the fun part's gonna be on the front, and I, unless I've told you, I don't think in a million years you guys could guess. When I first started painting fabric, I painted with a lot of water. I used a ton of water. Now, I still do like to use a lot of water when I'm doing a specific technique on chair. So I don't just paint one chair and it's always the same every single time. So I wanna be really clear tonight when we start painting. For one thing, I'm gonna tell you some things and you're gonna, you're gonna hear that I did some things with some paint that I would not want you to do on furniture. I wouldn't want you to do it on wood furniture because there on furniture you have uh, you you need to worry about you know its ability to bond with the wood right fabric you don't really have to worry about that you don't have to worry about it bonding it's not going to peel chip break it's it's going into the fabric it's becoming part of the fabric it's porous so you don't really have to worry about that keep in mind that this is fabric not wood so i'm going to say maybe some controversial things um but anyway i used to paint with a lot of water I realized over time that my chairs were less stiff the less water that I used. Um, in my opinion, if I just pound the water and the paint to try to dye my fabric, it's carrying the paint down in further into the cushion, right? Um, it's just water and it's just carrying down the paint with the you know, the, the bonding primers and all that kind of stuff down in the cushion, it makes it harder. So I use actually more paint. I want to stay more surface and less water. It doesn't matter what you do, your fabric chair or sofa stiff. And I, the way I say this is they feel like that sunbrella fabric. They feel like outdoor cushions. That's what they feel like. It's what they sound like. Hear that? That's what it sounds like. They all are gonna sound that way. These are fun. Like the small chairs like this are a lot of fun to me. Okay, so this chair is a thick fabric that is very textured. There you go, do y'all see this? Do y'all see that? Okay, that's not because the chair, the fabric's saggy. It's the fabric. It's got these ripples in it. It had them in it when I, got the, when I bought the chairs. It's just the type of fabric it is. I don't even know what it's called, but it's quilted everything there's all this quilting like almost embossing on it so it's got a lot of rays to it um so it's really thick the front is going to be a scene the it's going to be something i i know i know it's gonna be but i'm not gonna tell you but i paint my thing anyway and then people just look at the thing that i'm painting on there so yes if it's got a raised pattern you can't hide it and let's get started um on this other chair here so let me bring this one over here a little bit better so you can see super excited because we've got the new uh pinks right we've got the new pink um from silk the prickly pear so i mixed some colors and i came up with this color in the cup and you might can see the difference do you see my color is a lot deep this is goes a little more yellow and this goes really bold do y'all see the difference so i mixed my own colors mixed silk and the chalk mineral paint. We do not advise to do that when you're painting wood furniture. But I'm not painting wood furniture, I'm painting fabric and it's soaking right into the fabric. All this movement is soaking right into the fabric. All right, so I'm gonna use a dry brush. I'm gonna use my French tip brush because it, first of all, it's in a circle. I'm gonna be doing a lot of circular motion. Um, it's dry. I've got chalk mineral paint on here already, and now I'm gonna use my mix of Florida orange with a little bit of Fiery Sky to make this orange color here. Um, I've got my spray bottle right next to me. Also, normally we don't use water with silk, but I do use a little bit of water with this. It's on the chalk mineral paint. It's just what works for me after a lot of practice. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna dip a lot of paint. I've got a lot of paint on my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here. 
So I put it up here first and then I go ahead and I spray it just right on top of the paint. And then I just start carrying it down and I'm working in circles because that lets me get all of the highs and lows of the fabric um, from all directions. So not too much water. I mean, I'm just barely spritzing. Now I'm bringing it down. I'm trying to get all of that excess down and then I'll go back up here again and work in circle again. So while this is still wet, while my edge is wet, I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing in my pink. And I'm gonna go over here, spray it once it's on there, just kind of start moving it around. I'm trying to get as little on this trim as possible because that's gonna be turquoise. I don't wanna, it'll look purple if I don't get that off of there. And this is actually silk right here that I'm using right now. It's all silk. It's fiery sky mixed with uh, prickly pear. All right, so I think we're good here. I think we're gonna bring in just some straight fiery sky. My fave, my fave fiery sky. All right, so I'm gonna start in this far corner down here. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. I love this color so much, can y'all tell? So I'm gonna take it all the way across and I'm just gonna start working in a circle and we'll bring that up in to this pink. Let's spray it a little bit of water so we can get a little bit better movement. I think I'm gonna need a little bit more red up here. It went pretty pink pretty quickly, didn't it? All right, so I do stripes on chairs every time I paint them, every single time. I don't think I've ever not done black and white stripes somewhere on them. This fabric is so textured. Can you see it? Look, look at that. Anyway, it's pretty bumpy. I, I really was like, do I really want to do stripes on this? This is going to be a lot of work, but of course I do. So what, I, what I'm going to do with you right now is show you how I did them. So I taped them off. Now I tape them off. Um, I, wanted, I think that this trim right here, I think it's going to be black with uh, gold studs. So I want to, if this is going to be, this is going to be turquoise and then this is going to be black. So then I want this first stripe to be white. Okay, so I don't want to paint here. So I took my tape, I put it here. I don't want to paint there. So that's going to be white. So I just put it there. I'm not taping it hard. I don't need it to be, I'm not going to be painting next to it or anything. All right, so then um, I need a spacer piece. I'm reusing, this is the exact same uh, tape that I used on the other chair. I pulled it off and saved the pieces but I didn't save my spacer. So then you need a spacer piece, okay? Now guys, this is just for fabric that is bumpy. If you have smooth fabric, you really can tape and paint with the tape process. But if your fabric is bumpy, you cannot. Lightly trace off my stripes because I, now this won't work guys if you're gonna do a color that's not black, but mine are always black and white. But I'm just telling you that even on fabric that you think you can do paint uh, with tape, sometimes you can't and you do this. So this isn't just for bumpy, it's for maybe your seat is too curved or the, some, the curve is too strong and you can't tape the whole thing. Just lay it down, lay your tape down, trace it, uh, trace out where you're struggling and just freehand that portion of it. I've freehanded a lot of stripes on fabric for that very reason. So this is a tip that's not just for textured fabric. I used to tape my seats like this. And some of the chairs have a real big fat curve right here. Well, think about like geometry, like you're going on a curved surface. So if you've got, you're making a stripe down as you're, the center one is straight. But each one that comes this direction with that big fat curve, the stripes start to bow out a little bit. Each stripe starts to bow out. So I only do my stripes with tape on a big, on a seat front to here. I only do them to right here. And then I get in front of it and I lay my tape down and I make sure that I'm coming straight down from the curve over. I make sure I'm coming straight down. I lay my tape down and I trace it out and then I fill in by hand all of that portion. 
Okay, so I'm using, this is the, one of the Dixie Bell artistic brushes. I think they have new brushes that are, I think they come five different brushes in a package. And I really like the angle brush because it's got a really strong angle. And if you look up close, do you'll see what color these are? They're the same bristles. They're the same color bristles and the same type of bristles that are in our Bell, our Dixie Bell brushes. What's really cool about that is they are made to hold heavy paint and I am detailing with chalk paint, so that works really well. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I am just, I'm just using the paint that's in the lid. So normally when I do a stripe, I lay my angled brush at an angle like this and I run it like that with, so that this whole slant is touching the stripe side, right? I run the whole thing. Well, I don't wanna do that on this texture because that's too many bristles to have to control. I want one point of contact right there, one point of contact with my line. I don't wanna control all of those. I only wanna control that one right there. So this time, I'm turning my brush, you see this is black, white, black. I'm turning it so that only that the tallest part touches. So then I have to turn my brush and come at this side as well, turning it so that the tallest part, that one point, is touching that line. And you cannot do these fast on this texture, guys. I The reason I wanna go slow is because I want to give each bristle time to go in, over the hump, below the hump, down the smooth part, over the hump, below the hump. The slower I go, the more time it has to get over all those little humps. See, that's a big hump right there. I did a lot of, a lot of talking to myself like, whoa, over the hump, under the hump, there we go. And then once I got to about this far, I just kind of went whatever was left on my brush I just kind of, I knew it's first coat and I'll have to go back and do a second coat. Now listen, when I go back and do that second coat, I'm not going all the way back up by that line. Oh, heavens no. I will use a fatter brush, probably like this, and I will just run it right down the middle of that stripe. Okay, so I've got my one inch flat brush and I'm just gonna get enough paint here. Kind of move that paint around. And I will just, can y'all see this? Yeah. I'm just gonna pick a spot like this. This brush is a little thicker than I would like to use, but I'm just gonna kinda run it down. Flip my brush, come over to this side. So that's how my second coat's gonna go. Can y'all see the difference? See how sheer this is? See how sheer it is? And look how this is. And it's not just because it's wet, It's it's now got two coats. So this is what we call our scratch coat. It always looks ugly. And then this is the second coat and it will dry. It'll be have more of a flat dry, but this is silk. So it's gonna dry with a little bit of a sheen to it. We love you guys and I will see y'all very soon, okay? Y'all take care. Bye-bye.